Good morning and welcome to Thursday, April 23rd. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger coming to you today from the sacristy at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Saginaw, Michigan. The sacristy is a well-known room to our altar guild members and our acolytes and all of those who gather on what would be considered normal Sunday mornings uh, to prepare uh, for worship, to spend time in prayer. And so as kind of a throw out to our altar guild members today, the backdrop, the stained glass windows through which we can open and see the beautiful mornings each day. A little cool today, but a beautiful background nonetheless. The devotion today touches upon what many people have been probably thinking, if not once, more than a few times, with all the different events that seem to have culminated uh, up until this year over the last several months with the increase in violent storms and fires and rampant disease and hunger and then the global pandemic, more than just a few people have been wondering if these aren't some of the signs that Jesus talked about and that scripture talks about as those signs that anticipate and predict the nearer coming of Jesus. So I'd like to have all that put in context today, letting God's word have the final word. Luke 21, beginning at verse 25. Jesus said, And there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and on the earth the distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming in the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when those things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. The two words of the title are, look up. The news reports are often very frightening that we see each day. We've seen terror attacks make the headlines, mass shootings, incredible storms and fierce wildfires, all sorts of troubling events that are taking place oftentimes somewhere else in the world. But now some of those events have come a little too close to home for our comfort. These same events are far more terrifying when we face their deadly consequences, especially for the thousands of families now in our country that endure them, many of them, with a close personal story to tell. But whether these events are near or far, the world is always in an uproar. And as Jesus says, there is distress and there are people fainting with fear. Now, our initial reaction would be we would like to hide until it's all over. But the effects and consequences of sin in the world are never over. We do live in what is called the last times and the unknown length of days between Jesus' ministry and his visible and final return on the last day. For many centuries, Christians have watched unfolding tragedies and rightly recognized them as signs of the end that is coming. Jesus himself told us to watch for such events, and he said to remember that he is near, even at the very gates. Many false prophets have tried to predict the end with some degree of accuracy, and over the last century and a half, hundreds of predictions have come and gone. The sun rose the next day. We live to serve the Lord Jesus another day. All of those predictions come with absolutely no reality because only God the Father knows the day he will send his son. Our predictions will always be futile. So we must rather live not predicting the end, but living each day to the fullest in the joy of the knowledge of a living, risen Lord Jesus Christ. And the picture that God the Father paints of that last day and the coming of Jesus is often a very hopeful picture. Second Peter 3 says, On that day God will create a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. We will live in that righteousness and holy place forever, 
praising our risen and glorified Lord and Savior Jesus for the salvation he won for us on the cross and the victory over death he won by rising on the third day. And God will wipe away our tears, as Revelation 21 says, Neither shall there be mourning, or crying, or pain, or death anymore. These are the former things, and they have passed away. Each day we can't help but hear episodes and stories and news of violence and destruction as our world, the physical creation of God, continues to groan. We don't hide from these news events, but rather we should be looking up. Luke 21 says, When these things take place, straighten up, raise your heads, your redemption is near. Now for us as Christians, we have a great opportunity in these times, in the midst of a global pandemic that we all share. Our experiences are unique, but they are also common around the world. And let it be our prayer that in these days that we don't dwell so much on the suffering, the pain, the death, and count these as simply a sign that the end is closer. For every day of our life, the coming of Jesus is closer. And yet God calls us in Jesus to live each day to the fullest. There will always be events to fear, but fear does not leave us in a safe place. Knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, lifting up our fears and our rejoicings, our celebrations and thanksgivings to God in prayer are a way we can live fully each day. For even in the midst of the struggles around the world today, isn't there much, much more that we can be thankful for? Let us lift up that prayer to our Father in heaven now. Heavenly Father, as your word teaches us in all things, we are to give thanks. For this day is a new beginning for us, a day filled with opportunities to love and be loved, to be blessed and to be a blessing, to see around us and number the blessings you have provided for which we can give you thanks. We thank you for shelter. We thank you for food. And for many we know we thank you for health and strength. And for many we also know we thank you for healing in the midst of illness. We thank you for recovery for those that have come on the other side of the COVID-19 pandemic and find themselves recovering safely at home. But we also are not forgetful of the families who mourn the death of loved ones because of this global pandemic. And we pray that in the midst of their grief and sorrow, which we cannot even imagine, we pray that you would hear the prayers offered for them, their own prayers offered for strength and comfort and hope for each of their new days to come. Gracious Lord, each of our days is unique to our own life's experience. But let us never forget, there is so much for which we can be thankful and so many ways we can live this day and each day to your glory. As your scripture says, straighten up, look up, look ahead. We know Jesus is drawing nearer, but he also said to live each day to the fullest. May it be so today, even as we continue celebrating a living Lord and Savior Jesus, risen from the dead for us and lives and reigns to all eternity. So in his name, we pray together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and in the name of Jesus give you peace. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.